So, I made a video about Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures 1 and 2 Deluxe this morning. And I realized that the, the music was completely overtaking my voice. So this is my second take on it. Which is why you are going to see some uh, parts of the game already played. We can check out the options here, but essentially all you have here is like sound, music, volume. And I'm not going to turn down the music, because the music is frankly fucking awesome. So we are gonna go with that. And uh, of course I'm playing this on the Nintendo Switch. So we are gonna head into the Nin Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures, the first game. And since I do love the music, we're just gonna jump into Assholevania, which is of course a bit of a spoof on the Castlevania series of games. And of course, one of the hallmarks of this game is that it is complete and utter unfair. This is not a game that rewards your skill and intuition. This is a game that essentially is trial, error, and luck. And of course, a lot of it is based on the persona and the critiques that have appeared in various episodes of the Angry Video Game Nerd. Now, as they say in um, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, talk or shoot. Currently, I seem to doing very poorly while I actually talk, so I might want to cut down a bit on that. But for example, here we have a secondary weapon that basically just bounces around a lot. It is fairly useful in a sit very situational context. Just shooting them straight up is usually the better option. But basically that, <laughs> and of course, the hit from that sledge just sends you reeling back. So, like, like I said, the, a part of the gimmick is that the game is just blatantly unfair. And if you're not prepared for that, I mean, the, the game has, has an honest to god death counter when you die. So... And as the nerd says, he's, he essentially knows he's in a shitty game. Not that this is a shitty game, I have to say that for what it's trying to be, essentially a tribute to frustratingly hot, difficult uh, platformers, this game does its job really well. No! Come on! I mean, it, it is frustrating, but at the same time, it's never the kind of frustrating that just makes you throw away your controller. I mean, they have balance the frustration grade, so it lies on the perfect angle between frustration and fun. So yeah, and never mind the fact that you actually feel very, very happy whenever you actually manages to do something right. So we, we did get one of the nerd ends there, that is a thing imported from the second series of games, if I'm not mistaken. But we didn't get to keep it. Uh, oh, come on! Unfortunate jumps seems to be the bane of my existence here. And of course the hitboxes are also very, very unfair. And whatever grace period you got after you hit something is essentially non-existent. But I have to say, the graphics are looking real crisp, so they've done a real job with the deluxe upgrade, and it's fairly priced as well. I mean, you can't really complain when this game is about 15 bucks on the N Nintendo Switch store. I was actually a bit worried that it would cost a man a lot more than that. And the fact that it didn't just pleases me. 
And now I'm going to be very... We're going to wait until the pendulum... Yes. And we got to the next checkpoint. Speaking of unfair, here we have an enemy who essentially just... We can't shoot him from here, so we need to go closer. But... Oh, and of course... The, I don't know if you noticed that, but of course the hit from the weapon pushed me over the brink. So, if you want to challenge yourself, if you think you're really good at platform games, and I'm, I'm most certainly am not, uh, then this game is definitely one that you should try just for the sake of ego. See if see if uh, you you are as good as your ego thinks you are. So we got a couple of mines here, and mines are essentially just stuff that stuff that uh, will damage you. They're not as bad as the death blocks that can pop up a bit later on. Ooh, we actually got the E as well. So we are going to... And we got the checkpoint, sweet. Okay, so you can't do the Sonic the Hedgehog Marble Zone thing and just jump over them. So these are death blocks. These are instant death. No mercy, no joke. The utter instant death. And of course, some of them have, have spikes, because why wouldn't they have spikes? And this is also what I'm talking about when I complain that this game is unfair to a really ludicrous degree. As you can notice, there is a death block right in the middle there. And that death block is something you have to pass. Uh, speaking of unfair things, this part requires enormous timing. So, we are going to try and break through this timing. And we are also going to try and... Ooh, that's, that was very close. Watch the death blocks. No! Crap. Like I said, the mines... Yeah. The mines doesn't actually kill you outright. But... Uh, if you only have one beer bottle left... If you only have one beer bottle left on the wall... Then it doesn't really matter. Because you are going to take horrible damage either way. So that is why we need to grab that uh, beer keg over there to be able to refill our beer bottles whenever. And we need to be careful here. As you can see there are death blocks down there designed to catch people who are very unwary. So we're going to consume the beer keg and we're at the checkpoint. That means one of, at least one of our... <laughs> and just because of that, I managed to just mess everything up here. Well, that didn't work. I really want that last... I really want... The nerd to get the D. But I think I have to actually jump when the death block is on the ground rather than when it's. Uh, yeah. And the mines aren't really doing me any favors either for that matter. So we'll wait. Oh. Crap. No! And of course, now I have to do it all over again. And bloody mess.
It is really annoying. Because I'm going to need the beer bubbles for when I jump down the minefield after getting the D. There we go. Ah, crap. No! Well... No! I'm not gonna give up on that D. I'm gonna get it. I don't care how many times I have to send the nerd into certain death. He's from Massachusetts. I mean, he's gotta be used to the Witchfinder General condemning him to a certain... And in, to a severe punishment for his wicked ways. Okay, there we go. We'll wait until the death block is down. No! Sometimes it's better just to die and reset your beer bottles. I know there's an easy setting that essentially gives you five beer bottles, but at this point in time, I don't really feel like using it. Because I got in this far use with, only, with the, only these two, and... Okay, so there's a... Yes, there's a checkpoint down there. And there's a... Heavy firepower. Let's n nerd him up. Well, that didn't work. Come get some indeed. Checkpoint. And we have... The horror himself. Mr. Hyde, which is one of the earliest games that the nerd was very critical about for very good reasons, I might add. So, taking down the boss is going to be tricky, but hopefully we can... Yeah, we actually got stuck there, so... I really have to give a shout-out for the fucking awesome music. If the if this game has anything that they do absolutely perfect then right in every single way, it's the music. The music is just absolutely wonderful. But boy, do I wish for a fucking turbo button right now. Oh, come on! We need to get him away from the beer keg, and then we fire... Crap. So essentially, you can only fire on uh, him when he's uh, Dr. Jekyll. Ah, that was, that was just sloppy of me. So the beer keg didn't really help us all that much. I need to be less sloppy on this. Come on. And of course you have to use the pattern in his the pattern in which he fires to your ultimate advantage. And th these are all staples of uh, games like this that oh crud. Th these are all it's basically a staple of games like this that uh, there's always a pattern or something that you have to find out and some sometimes it's fair and sometimes it's 
just ridiculously unfair, and you really should be standing... And you also need to watch out for the way he jumps. And the grace period after you get hit is so fucking low. But as, as I keep saying to people who play this, you essentially know what you're getting into. I mean, you can't complain that this game is unfair, because... Part of the reason why you play it is because you want to test yourself against the very things that once broke their nerd. Oh! Come on, that was just so unfair. We can get this guy. We are going to get this guy. It's as simple as that. I mean, the entire experience wouldn't be so frustrating if I didn't have those spikes turning up there, but... I mean, this boss really should not take me this long to handle. But then again, I think part of my mistake is that I actually tried to shoot at Mr. Hyde, and I shouldn't actually bother with that. My focus when he's Mr. Hyde should obviously be to just go evasive and don't get hit by him. And uh, so far I seem to be failing that fairly hard. So, onwards. We got the bear. We have no fear because we have bear and then we die. <laughs> Obviously. So yeah, not trying to fire at Mr. Hyde is obviously the best solution here. Yeah. Simply fire when he's Dr. Jekyll and... Come on! Give me a big fat break here! I could really use one at this point. I mean, I kind of feel like I'm five years old again and can't pass the third boss in Sonic the Hedgehog. And I even... I mean, we did even have, like, family playthroughs of Sonic the Hedgehog when I was a kid. And I was like, yeah, this time we're gonna complete this level. And I'm basically feeling like I'm that age again. And the worst thing is that neither in my original playthrough or the first video I made did Mr. This did this boss take this many tries for me. I don't know why it suddenly takes me more tries, but like I said, it's part of the experience. I can barely. It's not really like I can complain, but I, I, what I really should do better here. Oh, come on, I activated the bloody beer keg. What I really should do better here is try and find out the golden spot for not getting hit by his... by his fire. But when you are standing in the best spot not to be hit by his fire, then you are standing in the golden spot to get hit by him when he jumps, which is... Oh, come on! Even worse, if the uh, spikes are up, then you essentially... Then they will essentially soak fire for him. 
And I do admit that there are times when I die so quickly, I barely even see what happened to me. But in like I said, in this case, it's fairly obvious. I just lose my... I just lose my cool here. I triggered the beer keg too early. I triggered the beer keg when I had three bottles, or two bottles. And I was really going to wait and just trigger it when I had just the one. What the hell happened? Did I just walk into the spikes or did I walk into Dr. Jekyll? Yeah, that was basically just me being it, fucking up. We want to look. We didn't even make it to the bear keg. I mean. We're just gonna keep on firing, get to the bear keg. Recharge. so annoying. Because uh, frustration will set in at some point and you will just feel like you can never do it. And like I said, that is a big part of this game. I mean, I can't... I, I'm not even saying it as a critique because you cannot, and I will, I want to emphasize this, you cannot go into this game and feel like what's happening to you is unfair. Because it is. And if you didn't know that on the onset, then... Uh, if you didn't know it was gonna be unfair on the onset, then I have to wonder, did you even know what you were getting into? Like, as... James Rolfe himself says about Dragon's Lair, it's, this game is a little bit like a cruel joke you play on your friends. You just hand them the, the, you hand them the controller and ask, do you want to play a game? And then, then you throw them straight into one of the later levels from this game. Like, you can do that, and it's an asshole thing to do. And it's kind of part of the appeal, like, you don't... I mean... If you have played, if you have watched a lot of Angry Video Game Nerd, then obviously you feel sometimes in, you sometimes feel like you want to play, you want to try out the games. No! We were gonna get him. Sometimes you feel like you want to try out the games. And I feel this is what th this game actually does really, really well. And that is essentially give you a good game where you can try out the mechanics that James have critiqued in his show. But in the setting of an actually good game. I mean, you don't have to play through... Uh, you don't have to play through, for example, Dragon's Lair or similar to experience the mechanics, because there's a bonus weapon in this game that actually works a lot like it. And at the same time, like I said, this is a good game. But the frustration is very much inspired by the show. And that is also very much intentional. And it also f makes you feel so satisfying. It's so fucking satisfying when you do get it. And Death's 69. Nice.
I mean, getting 69 deaths is so much on brand for this game. Getting 69 deaths is just so fucking on brand for this game. But yeah, basically they want 15 quids for this game. And it's a... sure, it's a rebrand of the earlier versions, but... Hey, hell, if you want it on the Switch, I would have paid 15 bucks to get the original game on the Switch because I feel like console games should be played on a console. There's no PC Gaming Master Race stigma here. It's, it's the, that simple that games that were made famous on a console should definitely be, on, be played on a console. I don't begrudge people who play them on a PC, but... For me, I want to play them on the on the Switch, and having the this uh, series on the Switch, that's just amazing. 